Hello, hello, everyone. It is Kenyon here. It is Basketball Rewind, and I am here joining you with Coach Roach and Beyond the Locker Room. We're here to discuss, obviously, the Raptors, as usual. We're here to discuss All-Star Weekend, the festivities that are going on. And finally, we're going to discuss the overall Eastern Conference standings moving forward because short of there being any sort of waiver wire candidates, we are basically are where we are for today in terms of trades. How are you all doing today? Good, man. Good, man. It's All-Star Weekend, you know. I've been enjoying, enjoying what festivities I've been able to watch. And, um, you know, it's family. For us in Ontario, it's Family Day weekend. So, hey, long weekend. woo <laughs> Coach? Absolutely. I'm doing good. Um, hopefully going to be watching Scotty play in the All-Star game tonight a little bit. We'll see see how it goes. Larry Bird has issued a challenge to everybody to play hard. So, we'll see what happens. <laughs> I... I... <laughs> I did not see that one coming, but uh, hey, man, good, good on him. Uh, I will say this uh, in terms of All Star Weekend, it's just interesting to see how it shifted. And I'll ask you guys when we get to it, uh, what could it be done to make it different and more excited? I have a couple ideas, but before we get into it, let's talk Raptor stuff. So, of course, within Raptor stuff, it does relate to the All Star. Scotty Barnes is an All Star, but he was also in the skills competition. I don't know if there's anything else this week that you guys want to talk about, whether it be us getting grubbed by uh, Wemby <laughs> or, uh, you know, if you guys want to talk about uh, the bounce back game in Indiana. That was actually one of the more entertaining games that we've had, to be honest. Yeah. I want to get in the, I want to just give a shout out to my man, Big Vic, man, because, you know, I went hard and bullish on him at the beginning of the season to the point where I thought to say I told him I squeeze into a playoff spot. I thought he might be that good. And he is he's actually as good as, as bargained for. I mean, the Spurs didn't help him out much with what they gave him to work with, but he himself, he delivered and then some. My yes. goodness. Well, yes. Like, that, like, that, like, that's like Ralph Sampson supersized. I watched it on, 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 a couple nights ago when, when they played the Raptors. Like, my goodness. He, um, he's, he's, he's box office. Like said, he's must-see TV, man. Like he, 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 Some shots that he pulled off or alley-oops they were trying. Like Now they've just figured out now the Spurs, like instead of just getting some cute alley-oop pass, just throw it to the rim. Whatever way you throw it on there, like you try to alley-oop one reverse dunk it in this case at one point. <laughs> like, 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 he, he, like even his passes were so impressive in yeah. that game alone. Like he was just doing like no look and like not fancy for the sake of being fancy. It was like this guy knows what he's doing. It's, and the it's thing is, yeah. with him with his seven foot four, seven foot five, whatever you want to call him. Some guys, even when they're that tall, they still want to jump. Like he just knows how to be st- st- like stationary. He just knows how to. He's ang- disciplined, yeah. Like, angled, right? Like I'm watching the things. The Raptors are going in there. He's not biting any pump things. He's just waiting. He's just waiting. Now, you can throw it up as much as you like. You can try to curl it around me wherever you want. I'm gonna be like a big tree. I'm still gonna be here when you come when you try to come through. And I just found the discipline you said is right the right word for it. Just really just for someone so young. Yeah, impeccable timing. Coach. Yeah. There are some prospects that are franchise changing and some that are generational. LeBron James, generational. And I'm saying top, top like the top picks in the draft. So I'm not gonna include Jordan in this, even though we all know he's generational. The, the creme de la creme since we're talking about the Frenchman. <laughs> <laughs> Hakeem Olajuwon, yeah, he was gen- he was in a sense. I think you can make an argument generational to a degree. Um, <clears throat> Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, generational. Web Binyama, he's right there with them. He's generational. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I-, I don't know what the name of it is, but like you know those things that people who get in trouble with the law and they have to pick things up from you know the street, and they have these little uh, grasper things so that they don't have to reach down. When he blocks, it's like someone with that. It's 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 crazy. I I don't know what that's called. Maybe it's like a like a picker upper or whatever that is elongated, but it, it just very few things get by him. And I think that you have to even change your timing around the rim when you're playing against him. It's it's really really interesting uh, how he catches guys off guard time and you time mean- again. You mean when he blocks your shot once, you don't go back and try again and try again and try again? I know a team that just did that a few days ago. Oh, it didn't work so well, did it? Yeah. Well, you know, we try as we I'm may. Right? theory of insanity. Yeah. I, well, you know, Pearl tried to get him with an up and under move. Didn't work. He, he did. <laughs> he didn't did. work. Scotty did. And 
It's a mm. nice attempt. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if we're, uh, if we're still handing out chains or not, but you get a chain for, for the effort. Okay, so uh, the other thing is, is to, to move past that. We look towards the future. Um, obviously, we're in All-Star Weekend. Oh, yeah. No, do we want to at least say something? The man of the hour came back this week. So much discussion about him. And we're just going to go on and have a show without even mentioning something about the well, man. Well, I'll, I'll pull a Raptors fan. He's gone, man. You got to move on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I hate when people do that. It's like, dude. Yeah. yeah. I don't even tweet about this dude. Yeah. <laughs> we we had an episode. We barely mentioned him actually until yeah, the end. You're like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'll just say this about about that game. First thing, you're right. It's probably one of the more entertaining games of the season. Mm. Um, it was very revealing in a lot of ways. Um, <laughs> in a lot of ways. <laughs> but I think just what the Raptors did. I'll give kudos. I've been tough on the Raptors franchise and how they managed their star players over the years. And the relationships that they've you know garnered after the fact, I think they did this one right. Um, the pregame thing, the video. I mean, they're giving out free jerseys. Heck, they're giving the swirls. You were saying in this case out there. I mean, McDonald's was cleaning up the house. So, like, I mean, like, good on them. I think they did a really good job. I mean, obviously, it looks like Seattle was quite appreciative. The fans did their part as well too. They were there early for the most part. Lots of forty threes were in the crowd. And we got a great game out of it, man. And, you know, and everyone went home for, for the most part happy. I mean, the Raptors didn't win, but like, you know, we saw a bit of everything. You know, if you, you know, if you know, I think Sky's gonna be the next thing since sliced bread, there's glimmers of hope where you saw that there that day as well, too. And then, hey, man, Siakam did, you know, pretty much what Siakam does in this case here, man. You know, he'll give his typical Siakam line in this case here, which is approaching a triple double and, you know, do Siakam stuff in this case here. So you got a bit of everything. So it, it, it was good. You know, you know. Yeah, except for getting the win, everything else was it was great. Well, the other thing too is that if you take out the Raptors' first ten games for Siakam, he is shooting. I think at one point throughout the season, he's been shooting like forty five percent from three. Uh, he's been shooting forty one percent from three uh, on Indiana on decent attempts and stuff like that. We don't need to go through and make this the Siakam show, but I just find it uh, certainly interesting. Um, and like again, like it, even. Even though uh, our team was up and down throughout the season at best, uh, his play actually, you know, after the first 10 games improved and became very quite quite steady and there was a floor there. So, but say la vie, um, he is gone. It is uh, unfortunate, but what I will say is we discussed something the other day and you touched on it just now. We finally gave a player who left a, good send-off i guess in a way and obviously very deservingly so but i think even people who were some of his biggest critics some of the people that were making you know on the day that he got traded showing low light videos and stuff like that like even they had to be like re- almost reevaluate themselves and rethink like how they view this individual and we'll see if that that kind of mentality it, you know sparks a shift towards the fan base overall <laughs> um on a continuing basis but you know we will we we, we shall see um I'm Price Davis just the other day don't mean loves in the air there okay <laughs> no no uh <laughs> true what <laughs> i will also <laughs> what i'll also say is this it's it's very interesting i didn't think i was going to go in this direction but uh maybe instead of talking about the end of the the raptor well is there one thing for the ra- end of the raptor season that you're interested in or no at the end of the Raptors season, like when this yeah, between I, now and the end of the season. Oh, it's easy for me, man. Just how far can Grady go? That's it. right. My point exactly, absolutely. And they better be playing him twenty yeah. to twenty-five minutes a night yeah. till the end like, of the year. None of this ten-minute crap that they exactly. sometimes do. Like, who, who we fighting in minutes for at this point? Like that's what I want to see. Like he, if we had a movie and you put who's at the top of the banner in this case of who I'm coming to see for the theater, it should say Grady Dick on it, starring Grady Dick. That's why I come to watch. One, one of the most interesting things is just to wrap up the the Raptors discussion, and we could discuss this in further, uh, you know, in in a future episode. Some of the Scotty stands, you know, I'm a Scotty fan. I'm a Raptors fan. I'm not a Scotty stan. Some of the Scotty stands seem to be outlining that they're upset with Raptors fans that Scotty isn't beloved i find that really interesting 
I don't know if you have any theories behind that or if you want to just discuss this another in a future episode because it could be an episode on its own. It, it, it probably merits an episode on its own because there's a lot of layers to it. There is and, a lot of layers to it. I think. It's, it's part of it is stems, in my opinion, I'll just say really quickly as a 30-second point, I think part of it is because of where, when he came, it was like a pandemic type thing. Part of it's that and, too. And, and, and how he was introduced to the team through a pandemic, that that's tough. Like our whole fan base wasn't like together in a sense, like physically together watching games for a long time. Mm-hmm. So, but we can get into that another because uh, I I do think it's interesting and it was, it's interesting to hear, um, you know that that is uh, you know something that is drawing the ire of certain people in his fan base. Um, mm-hmm. Those type of things people work themselves out over time. Um, most players aren't necessarily beloved from day one unless you're Wemby or something like that, right? And, and just for the Scotty stands, you know who wasn't that beloved actually in this case here when they came here as well too? Some guy named from Philadelphia named Kyle Lowry. I was going to say Lowry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what say? Wasn't that beloved? You know, it was another one? Wasn't that beloved when you first started here too? Probably the reason why you didn't stay that long. Crazy McGrady. Wasn't really that beloved. True. That. true. <laughs> I, I, I keep That's going very down true. <laughs> We don't we don't always appreciate what we have uh, until it's gone. Some of us do, but not on uh, not uh you know by and large. So with that being said, we go just right into All Star Weekend. Of course, Scotty's having a uh you know his fun at the All Star Weekend. Not really going to talk much about it because I haven't really found the All Star Weekend it, oh, on the whole to be that interesting. Um, you know, I thought that the dunk contest wasn't that good. We were filming this before, of course, the the game tonight, the All Star game itself. I did find that the Sabrina versus Curry thing was quite interesting. And did a good job of you know drawing up you know additional support for the WNBA and just interest there's people that I know that aren't really that interested in basketball and they tuned in for that and I think that that's it's always important to grow the game so I really like that I hope that they do it again at some point when they have you know Caitlin Clark in the league and you know maybe you know there's there's just a lot of different things that they could do that are interesting but before I get to into what they could do in the future. What did you guys think of the all-star stuff in the weekend? Uh, no, I love the Steph versus Sabrina um, skills competition where they've both taken threes. And, you know, you got two of the best three point shooters in the world, each in, the, in their respective leagues. I really, really love that idea. Um, um, other than that, nothing really Nothing else really stood out to me. I, I think the best All-Star weekend for me, well, I have two in my mind that I can think of. One when I was 12 was the, the 2000 All-Star competition. Like, not just Vince, but you had T-Mac and Steve Francis in the dunk competition. It was a really good dunk competition. And then the one the one in Toronto, too. Now, maybe that's a little bit of bias, but those are the only two dunk competitions. And maybe the one last year with McClung, um, with some of the things he could do that really stood st- stood out to me. And and yesterday, I just wasn't, like, excited about it, quite frankly. Coach, I don't think it's bias. I thought 2016 was one of the best All-Star weekends, both from a dunk oh. contest, but just the atmosphere and everything, and not just because it was in Toronto. I just thought it was, you know, overall well done and well presented. Word yeah. is it was pretty good outside the All-Star game, too, in this case as well, but we'll leave that for another day. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's true. That's, that's what, that's it was cold, but people had fun. <laughs> it's going to be cold. They better have fun. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. There's stories. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Um, but you know, with that be, I don't know how in the atmosphere is in Indiana. Uh, I do know that they did get some snow. Oh, I know that. It is, it is cold. It, did cold. they have fun? We will find out. Uh, <laughs> TBD, TBD. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I think what's interesting is also looking at the rookie sophomore game. I want to talk about that really briefly. I thought that the changes that they made, I think it was last year or I think it was last year. Last year, the year before, yeah. It was last year or the year before where they included it as being a tournament style. That, I think, is a success. Really good decision there. I thought it was really cool. You know, I tune in because then it's, you know, it's a lower scoring games, but it happens very quickly. So you, you get to see basically, you know, several different teams go at it. Most importantly, their inclusion of, and I don't know how they select the teams exactly, but of the G League players, the G League Ignite players, and some of just the G League players. 
of course uh marquise noel was supposed to be there but is injured i think that's important because those players will increase the intensity of the of the atmosphere right it's a it's a event that's supposed to showcase the future of the league and when you're including guys who aren't even quite in the league yet and there is their chance to really show who they are and their skill set and their talents off to the world you usually see people get a little bit more competitive and as we saw with the Matherin case a little bit more chippy you know Matherin basically telling Jaden Ivy uh you know you can't guard me. I don't care if it's the rookie, you know, the rising star game, you still can't guard me. So there was a couple, you know, behind the back passes and stuff like that. Detroit India rivalry guy. That thing don't go down easy. Let me tell you. <laughs> no, I and honestly, I, I, I will say this again, not to harp on the deal, but would have been nice to get that guy in a Raptors uniform because Which man, one? that guy. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. So there's a whole <laughs> Yeah. list it's it's not it's not a flashcard people <laughs> uh but yeah so it, it, he's he's gonna be uh he has moxie he yeah. has an it factor love the old moxie like nice yes uh, i i i don't know should i let you wrap up your thoughts no 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 go go for it i want to jump in with the all-stars discussion i don't know i think personally i think the nba's done a really good job of beefing up the all-star weekend um, I think if you look at overall the totality, of it, it gets skewed so much because it depends on if there's a bad slam dunk competition or a good one. Everything else gets get wallpapered with it. Well, right. this competition was great. I sat down here with what the folks in the on the on the Twitter, the bird, or whatever you want to call it these days, X, were referred to as casuals. I sat down to see the reaction. They were entertained with the three point competition. They had blowout blast watching it. To your point, the Sabrina Kurt Steph thing, they enjoyed that in this case. You go into the even the in the skills competition, they were had interest trying to understand how it was working. So that and the fact you had young stars in this case are asking how come they pick these type of teams with these type of teams. It got certain names out there they were maybe not familiar with beforehand. You know, and I got to introduce the big Vic, which is the most important thing. So <laughs> so I, and then I go back to your point where you said on the Friday night, I wouldn't say I sat down there, I didn't get to watch as much of the um of the rising stars part of it, but I didn't even watch. And it seems strange to say this when I say this. I actually did watch the celebrity game and the celebrity game as they're getting breakfast, watch celebrity and rebroadcast it on Saturday morning. I ain't gonna lie. It was fairly entertaining. Now, most times celebrity games usually trash in this case here. However, what they've done the last couple of years is they actually got celebrities that actually know the ball. It's not a guy here. Look, 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 the basketball in this case, like it's an asteroid. Like what the heck is this strange thing? No, they actually got folks that like, ball in their own time. So it made the quality of the game a little more interesting. Had some little tweaks to it. The court was really cool. You know, I was like, oh, we got four four point lines moving up and back and forth. It made it kind of entertaining. Like it's supposed to be fun. And I think if we just had to take it on the level of like, let's compare this the 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 NBA versus the NHL was just a week ago versus you picked the football one was just a week ago or two weeks ago. And you uh, and baseball, I'm gonna start with baseball. I mean, the home run things are all right, but like it's kind of gotten a little stale too. I still think the NBA one's the best one by far. By far. You know, the, the um, MLS has the one with the Mexican League or something like that. Okay. They do their little kicks from half from like center from, from center and stuff like that. That's kind of cool. Well, but, is, oh, isn't there the Pro Bowl for football? Oh geez, that's like flag football. Okay, but that happens like after the season too. It's like the season. It's the it's the week before the end of the championship games and the end of the in between the Super Bowl. So that middle. Week oh, okay. Before, that's so where yeah. the Pro Bowl. Yeah. Playing in Hawaii, no one touches each other, and they score seventy points apiece. Like, there you <laughs> that's what you want. That's what you call football. And knock yourself out. I get it. football's in a tough spot. Same thing with hockey, right? Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Heavy contact sport. It's kind of hard to kind of get the full breadth of what the game is. But when it's all said and done, basketball still clears all of them by a mile. I think I think the basketball is because the heights were so high for it for so many years and decades when it was so far past everything else that the game, in this case, the game itself on Sunday has been, you know, has weaned a bit in this case. It had some moments with some great games. Well, I think it comes down to that slam dunk in that game. And people think of everything else as nothing after unless those two things are right. And like the slam dunk competition has been hit and miss. I think part of it would be better if, and I think it's a good thing, as much as it's dunk stunk, it was good for Jalen Brown to be in it. I mean, mm-hmm. I was, even though it was dunk stunk. That was the most Jalen Brown dunk contest you could ever think of. I'm sure Jalen Brown was there in the fleet center practicing those, those dunks and thought they were the hottest things since slave bread. Hottest thing on the streets. 
And everyone else didn't want to tell Jalen, dude, Jalen, he ain't really that hot in this case here. But Jalen, you know, Jalen, Jalen probably thinks he's the smartest guy in the room. So Jalen said, yo, man, it's a hot ish. Like, I mean, okay. it it wasn't as bad as, oh, who was it? I think it was John Collins who who jumped over the paper plane. Yes, but at least John Collins had some imagination with his. True, like, true, because he put on the, the scarf and everything. and It, I, this, it, this, it, 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 it was a neat no, prop. If I was him, and I saw what, what Hakez did with the dunk over Shaq with the thing, yeah. I would just wrap that dunk I had there with, with homeboy there, Kai Sinat, Sinat coming out there. What sense of having him doing essentially the same thing? He's, yeah, <laughs> yeah over a shorter dude. <laughs> He's short by like two feet. Right. And then he's sitting in a chair to make it worse. And then he's going to do the same camera trip. Like, come on, man. Like, you, at that point, you got to dump that and say, Kai, we got to go. Sorry, man. I'll, I'll yeah, get you. Sit, sit, sit down. We're going to go with Shaq. Because yeah, <laughs> Shaq's right there. Yeah, because Shaq, he did the better dunk doing the same thing. Yeah. You know, so like, I think like the imagination point of Brown was really bad. And as Kenny Smith said, man, Listen, man, if you're going to do something with a teammate, get one because actually pass. I don't know how many times you guys you see guys come up here with 30-point scores out here trying to pass. <laughs> yeah. I, I think, too, with the All-Star game, what's kind of taken it aback a little bit is just the inability of stars wanting to participate in some of these things. Maybe more so the dunk competition. Because stars participate in the three-point competition. Uh, yes. I mean, for, for close to 20 years, they were trying to get LeBron James to compete in the dunk competition. Now imagine what kind of attraction that would bring if, if he did do it. He's not going to do it now, but I mean like 10 years ago. Well, there was a time or, when I was like, if we could get you know LeBron and, and Vince – and you know, <laughs> there was there yeah. was a moment there where you're like, oh, we could get some, we could get some dudes who could really. Uh... Well, okay, here's okay, here's one that you could do. I, I, I've been, uh, I'm not sure you're in your proposal phase or not, but here's one. Cause, yeah, let's you, go to a proposal phase. Because I think overall, I think they got most of the other elements down right. Like I don't mm -hmm. think there's really much to do. I even think the skills competition it could probably be tweaked a little bit to make it a little less confusing for folks to follow a little bit. I think that part could be improved a bit, but I think the fact that, to your point, Coach, they had names in there. There were all-star players in there, you know, all over the place. They had the top, top number one overall pick in there. Like, yeah, that's a big yep. that's a thing for the skills yep. competition. So, like, they're getting what they need to get for all the other levels. So, for the all-star game, or not the all-star game, for the dunk competition itself, look, man, I would put it straight like this. The first-round picks of the first three years, you could put it in this case as a bonus clause in this case here, if you choose to actually participate in the dunk conference, some type of compensation, right? And that will get to the first three years. Yeah, you got to be within the first three years. If you don't do it here, and right. then maybe you get a bonus if you win it. Great. So that would get you Zion, for example, at least in the past. Because mm. Zion, in my mind, would have been an ideal person. He would have been yeah. That's right. So Big Z would have been there. You could get, in this case, my man there down the street from Mississauga, in this case here. Right. I don't know how he didn't get picked. Like, what the heck are we talking Apparently about? Apparently, he's injured. That's why. Like, man, someone, 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 someone get some butt leash for some of these guys, man. Everyone always hurt. <laughs> I'm confused. Who do you mean? Like, like, holy smokes. But yeah, I mean, the same, like, the same Matherin. Oh. Like, I mean, like, how is he not in there? Like, they got him the skills competition. That's a good question. He's in every other thing. He might as well be in the tongue contest. Yeah. Right. Oh, you mean Sharp. Okay. I had to think for a second. Yeah. Yeah. Is that who you meant, Shade and Sharp? Uh, yeah. yeah, that's uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. I will I take we'll take anyone else too. <laughs> yeah, like, I think in London area, I think I should be fair. I think Sharp's out. But Sharp, Matherin, all them dudes should be in there. Like there's yeah. so many players to pick from. And and no disrespect. I mean, we know the Toppins can jump. So that's fine. I get that. We saw the brother do it. Was it really that successful? But I'm not trying to judge the other brother with it, but fine. A Toppins in there, fine. I mean, but you know, some of the other let me put it this way. There's possibilities of other com competitors in there that I think these guys just have to open up their imagination on what the kind of will spur them. Maybe it's one of these things that for the four guys we pick, maybe it's a little bit of competition that put it where the four guys we pick could be like a special a special cover for the next 2K. That, guys like that would like that. Oh, that oh. That, that would sell. Oh, 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 <laughs> All of a sudden now you get the special cover of the slam dunk, you know, slam dunk, you know, the slam dunk edition for that year. You know, yeah. and you get it out early. Right, and these four guys, or will be you, you even get, uh, or y your animations specifically get into, right? Yeah, right. that's creative. actually not a bad idea. You no, know, that's what these guys. That's what get these guys going. Besides money, you know, things like that. You know? So I, I'll, I'll just put my proposal out there right away. 
Um, I think either a one-on-one -on -one competition would be kind of cool. I don't know how the like the logistics of it, but it'd be interesting. You know, uh, you know, go go to seven and have a little bit of a tournament. That'd be interesting. I don't know about that. One. It, it, someone could get hurt. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So that's the downside yeah. of it. That's a great moment. Yeah, it folks would be in their feelings real quick. I don't. Uh, yeah, but it'd be yeah. fun. It'd be fun. Or or a three on three. Well. Yeah, even that one, man. That yeah, one, I'm thinking dangerous things, but like, yeah, yeah like, cause, 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 there'd be some competition for it. You know what I mean? Okay. Especially with the one on one thing. Look, we already know they put one of the reasons why they're going back to East West format is because they did like the the, the 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 optics of someone being left last when the, when the draft came. Now, I firstly think <laughs> to see who was gonna get picked last. Yes, hockey or basketball. I was looking forward to it this year. I didn't get it. The year Phil Kessel got picked last, man, that would have been a talk for the entire week in this case when he got picked last. <laughs> right for, in the NHL. You always want guys to see, like, okay, who's going to get picked last? It, it's fascinating. But they took it out because I guess they were, I don't know, people got kind of soft in their feelings about it, whatever. I doubt it was Jokic because Jokic really you want to be there. But I doubt it. But nonetheless, <laughs> Jokic really just want to be on beach somewhere. If there's ever been a player that has wanted less to do with an all-star game, that is the dude. <laughs> and so... Yogi's like, just put me in for my one minute say I played and I'm done. <laughs> no one else can get my minute. But to me, that I, I, I have no problem but I, to your ideas, that, that will cause issues. That will cause issues. That will cause issues. Hey man, controversy sells. Uh coach, your your when thoughts like, are when your friend just played turns ankles up for four weeks afterwards. He hey play. man, did he win the uh, is he the best one on one player at the All-Star? That's all I care about. Uh, I think it'd be interesting, but I, I I also fully admit that it it's uh, it could get sketchy because it would be co competitive to say the least, and it would just be one 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 turn angle, and that would be a wrap. Uh, but it, for the one year or two years that they did it, it'd be interesting. Uh, <laughs> Coach, uh, do you have any proposals for the future? If not, we're going to go through the standings. Well. Like Tyler kind of Fion said, if there was something in their contract where, hey, you compete in the dunk competition, you win, you get X amount of dollars extra. But I think it's about stars. That's how you sell this game. Basketball is a very star driven league. Probably of any league, really, in, in the of all the major sports, it's basketball. And I'm just trying to think imagine if you had a dunk competition of Zion, Sharp, Anthony Edwards, and I'll just throw one more up there just for, let's say, Scotty's in it. Just to give you an example. You got those four guys. Do you think people would be showing up to watch that? I think definitely they people would be tuning in. Because you've got four guys who have, you know, have some pedigree in the league, but they're still quite young. You got Scotty's a rookie, rookie of the year, Zion, the former number one pick, and he is what he is. Ant Man, former rookie of the year, who's probably going to be one of the faces of the league, if not the face of the league. And the thing with Scotty is people are like, oh, his coach had an epic rant about him, about him being the face of the league. Let's just see if he actually has that chance to be. So I'm just trying to think of the fan intrigue about something like that. And of course, Shaden Sharp, we've seen some of his dunks during games and they're phenomenal. And he probably could win that competition, actually. So I just look at something like that and I'm like, I would be tuning in to watch that dunk competition. That is 100% sure. I think if you were, there were somehow you'd be able to do that, but that's going to take commitment from the players. That's the only thing. And that's why they, where I think they've dropped the ball because I don't like the superstar guys that trains left the building. You're never getting that again. But to your point, coach, that, that small thing where you have those guys in his first three years or so, where you can see some elements of that. Those are the dudes. I don't understand how they're missing out on those guys. You know, where we're getting like, you know, we're getting like Jones Jr. and fellows like that. No, we shouldn't be getting to that level. We should be getting to these dudes. No disrespect to Jones Jr., but at one point we were getting those guys. That Levine was one of those guys at one point, mm -hmm. right? Aaron Gordon was one of those guys at that point. Those yep. two, their, their sequel, because not just that one, they had the other one, which I think was in Chicago, because they were talking about the home cooking. <laughs> you know, Chicago likes their home cooking. I ain't gonna go down that road. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say about that. So then the boy was, was in Toronto and then the rematch. Those two dunk offs between those two dudes, this is some of the best dunks I've ever seen in those two competitions. But there are also guys that are like kind of like a certain level of player where it's like, yeah, we want to see that. That's the guy we're missing. We're going, we're going like a rung down now. We're like, you know, hey, we're going two rungs and we got McClung out here, even playing for a team at the moment, winning dunk offs now. So, like, that's where they need to attack. 
those first three years, and to, and, and to and Kenyon's idea, why I know it won't work, the dunk competition last night proved my point. Because McClung out here dunking like his life depending on it, right? He about to break his neck or dunk to go a shot. You see what you see what Jalen Brown was doing? Well, hey, uh, you got to remember that the bonus from the <laughs> from that game is is basically a huge bonus to McClung. That's my point. Because you watch Jalen Brown dunk, they were like, "I ain't trying to get hurt because I trying to win a championship this season." Right. That's the dunks I'm doing. <laughs> okay, I'm right. gonna close my eyes till I get down the ground. <laughs> so. So, Beyond, you already gave me your opinion on this, so I'm going to go to Coach, because uh, you, you, you jumped the gun on this. Uh, so I'm going to ask Coach, what did you think about the court? I thought the court was cool, what, what bit that I saw of it. Um, I, I, I'm guessing it was aesthetically pleasing for a lot of people. <laughs> I really don't have any other opinions. Like I, I'm not shocked by the court. It's, I guess that's what I'm saying in this day and age of AI crowd, and stuff like that. Plus about this, I wait for the parking crowd. I know it's coming. Someone on top radio is gonna go crazy about this on my. <laughs> so I, I, I was kind of okay. Here's my opinion. I thought the court was interesting. I think it's cool. I at the same time, it's a bit too much like the 2K idea, and I just wonder if they could. I don't want to say mute it, but like, I, I just wonder what is the, the application for it in the future, right? Is, is this something where, you know, this becomes a thing where if someone has a big dunk or whatever, they have part of the court lights up or, you know, it, it has few, NBA jam, right? Which is the perfect example. Of exactly. It. It's like, is, is that where we're headed or are we headed somewhere else? So that's kind of my question about it i thought overall it was fine okay sometimes I, a bit much just in terms of the colors but yeah okay here's where i think is an application three places we already know in playing games they've already tried different types of courts i don't think they're gonna go as far with it as we did with the all-star game i think the all-star game do whatever the hell you or want the in season yeah sorry yeah the yeah the play in in season tournament that's what i'm talking about yeah 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 that's where... well, but e either a play in or in season that would okay. be interesting i meant in season yes the in season tournament for ah. Yeah, in season, true playing. No, nah, no, nah, I don't think you want playing in season tournament. Great, you might use it in some small fashion, not a big fashion. What you might want to do is what you might you or it might be useful is somehow use the court of when it gets down to everyone make the deal about the plus minuses, right? We got the last games, and you might want to put something that's like, hey, they're fourteen points away from making the turn. You might want to put something down the court, right? That'd be neat. So now DeRose don't have to get mad, right? So there we go, we got that covered. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing too is we are all star game. Go hog wild. Do whatever you want. NBA Jam, two K. Knock yourself out. That's what's supposed to be. You're trying to get young people involved, and this is their introduction to the game. A lot of times, the all star game. Do whatever you want. I could care less, man. You could have fire. You could have lava. Whatever the case may be. The third place it could go in this case, where I think it could be fascinating, would be um, summer league. I think it could be very interesting a little bit in summer league. I think it could be used in a, 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 a certain area. Yeah, you got live at summer league sometimes, man. There's some dog games. So well, to your point, if they're going to do it in Vegas anyways, you're already there for the summer league stuff. There you go. I think, and I think those are the three areas I would focus on for that. I think we get to play games. Ain't it got playoff implications? No, you don't want anything that gimmicky. And we all right. that. Right, you know, right. And, yeah, but th those things, those three areas are some places where I think you can use it. And uh, one other place, and they did it last year actually for the All-Star game. They had a tie with Marvel, and they did an Avengers broadcast. And that's the other place where you can see something like this. Where you have the broadcast, and you want the video game, video, video location of it, go to ESPN2 to watch it. If right. you want the, real, the old school broadcast, watch on ESPN1. Yeah, there's there, there's some stuff that they could do. I, I didn't like it at first, but then it kind of it's kind of grown on me a little bit. Uh, just because I was like, oh, okay, that's that's a bit much, <laughs> just a tiny bit much, but I think that there are things that you can do with it for sure. So I'll, I'll definitely say that now. I'm all you Hoosiers for now on, man. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, G. <laughs> uh, so just to cap uh, off that, we now enter into the standings discussion. Just one through eight. Your guys' opinion on the on the uh, the rest of the season in terms of the East and the West. Who do you guys? You know what? I'll say. Let's let's go through the West first. We'll save the 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 beast of the East for the for the rest. Um, so one through eight. West. What, I'll I'll pick you. Beyond the eight teams, who I think are going to be in the playoffs. Yeah. 
Yep. Um, Minnesota, Oklahoma City, Denver, the Clippers. Um, who's another obvious team I'm forgetting off the top of my head? The obvious. Dallas. Mm-hmm. Oh, let's put them to the side for a second. <laughs> as much as I like to say, though. They're so, hanging on. Hey, I, uh, you know. Let's put it to the side for <laughs> Those four are <or> on <laughs> I'm forgetting two other teams. Um, Did you say Denver? Yeah, those four are automatic. There's somebody else yeah. I'm forgetting. Um, Pelicans? Yeah, I'll put them in. I always nervous about the injury bug with them, but I'll put them in for now. Five. I think they're solid at the moment. That, that, who's the other three I'm forgetting now? That, that, uh, that, that's, that's eight already. Well, that's five I only have. No, because you went Minnesota. The okay. I think you said Clippers, Denver. 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 You, right. Did you say OKC as well? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so then fine. I'm forgetting. I'm, I'm going blank on someone. Phoenix. So that's, Phoenix. That's six. Okay, those six are guaranteed. I think. I think for the And then you point. said not really for Dallas, and you yeah, didn't really comment. For the other two, I'll say okay. Maybe my Dallas hat. I say okay, Dallas squeezes it. Fine. Seven and the eighth team would be. Sorry, I gotta say the eighteen, the Los Angeles Lakers. Okay, so not not uh, not the Kings. The Kings will fall oh, so all the way down. My apologies. That's the team I was forgetting. So, okay. dump, so swap out swap out New Orleans and put the Kings in their spot. New you Orleans think that the Kings are going to rise to New Orleans' spot? Yeah. I think, no. What I'm saying is they're going to be one of the eight. The New Orleans will not be part of the eight when it's said and done. Okay. Okay. So right now, New Orleans is in sixth, but only by yeah. two games. So it's a lot closer out there. 40 games left, those two boys can stay healthy. Yeah. Coach? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the top four, certainly Minnesota, OKC, the Clippers, who I think could end up as a number one seed. I think just playing really, really well, especially when Kawhi plays well, this team does, this team does well. Denver will be there as the, as the reigning champs, and they're just, you know, Jokic and Murray together. They're, they're, they're fantastic. Phoenix has been winning a bit more lately. Now, Phoenix is going to come down to health. If all three of those guys are healthy, yeah, they should be there. Um, the team that I'm not so sure about are the Lakers. I actually think Golden State will make it in the top eight before the season's done. I think they've been on a they they are looking better. They have found something with Jonathan Kaminga, quite frankly. If Draymond kind of has his head on straight, I think they'll be in the playoffs in the top eight, as long as he, he doesn't do anything more like we saw earlier in the year. I'm just not sold on Sacramento or the Lakers. I think Dallas will be there too. I really like what Dallas, some of the moves they made, even though I know they've been losing a little bit lately. I think that will take care of itself. And I think, I just think Dallas will be in the top eight. It's Sacramento and the Lakers. I'm not so sure about. May, 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 I, make, may I make a suggestion or, you know, to, mm-hmm. to appeal the court in this case for something? Just for a second. <laughs> Was it for Dallas or? No, for or, the Lakers. Okay, for Lakers. <laughs> for Lakers in a sense. You know how sometimes you watch certain teams and you, you know, and, and it, it happens in other sports as well too. Hockey is the ones that stick in my head. Mm. We're watching during the season, you're like, ugh, this team, but if they ever could get in the playoffs, they're a team built for the playoffs more so than they built for the regular season, right? Yeah, but that gets dangerous right. as we know. Right. The Bruins were the Bruins for years were like that. They'll be mucking around, mucking around, mucking around. Not the new Bruins, the old school Bruins for you kids at home, right? Mucking around, barely winning games 2-1. But you get in the playoffs, man. They're gonna mug everyone. Cam Neal and them boys are gonna mug everyone to death, and they're gonna be the hardest out you've ever seen. And I feel a little bit like that with the Lakers, where it's like, I once it gets down to the nitty gritty, and we get warm weather. This team's gonna be a tougher out as you see as time goes on. They're already about three, four games over five hundred right now, and they got two things that you need in a playoff. One is they got a front court in this case that's gonna make life harder for you to score buckets in the lane, and they got a closer. And if you got those two things. You're going to be all right in the spring. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, yeah. Sacramento and God. <laughs> I agree with your well, what you're saying about the playoffs, but it's getting there. And I'm just not sold on this team. So they made no moves at the deadline. And LeBron always wants this team to make moves, get rid of the draft picks for the next 20 years so we can so we can make the playoffs. And yes. I just I, I just worry about health from LeBron and AD. Eight, LeBron is just with Age and attrition. That's it. AD, is he gonna is, is he yeah. gonna roll his ankle? Is he gonna step Brandon, on a mosquito? That yes. kind of thing. That's all and, the key. I do. And I just worry about that's gonna come into play a little bit here. I just find because what bit I've been watching Golden State lately, they really like they're starting to click now. And I think 
I definitely I'm not sold on Sacramento. I know Sabonis is playing well. I get that, but what? I I like yeah. Dallas's depth more than I like Sacramento's depth. Yeah, yeah, but you talk about injuries, man. Kyrie is never like you know healthy for much longer. So I mean, I will say this to the Lakers. I'll put it this way. Let me see if you guys agree with this. Is there any team that you think in this case can flip their switch and go up more levels than the Lakers, than perhaps the defending champions? Anybody else? Maybe depending on a few things, but maybe the Golden State Warriors. Really? I really? think it's it's possible. Like between between now and the end of the season, so the challenge think- with the Warriors is that they're so far behind that I actually disagree. I don't think that I think that they're actually at risk of, of flaming yeah. out trying to get to the playoffs. Yeah. Um, so the, you know, you know, yeah, I, I, I but because the league, I look at the Warriors. I look at it this way right now. Steph's like on a heater. Like Steph's doing everything he can. Kaminga's obviously. He can perhaps even go with more levels, granted, so that will help their ceiling. I agree with that. Probably, so okay. If say, say say for example, Clay. That's the problem. <laughs> right. I don't think he can, but like let's say yeah. he does. That is a game changer. That is a game changer, but what are the odds of that happening? Like, slim. Is, I'm, like, hey, you asked me the question. I'm just asking you the question. You. <laughs> we both, no, we both agree that's the X factor, right? Yeah. Dream on. At this point, I don't see those guys. Because Sacramento up. hasn't really addressed their 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 oh. what I think is their issue, which is that you know when when the going gets tough, is you're relying on Sabonis to try to create from the long mid range to True. which he he doesn't do yeah. that well to the three point, which he also does not do that well. Last time I checked. Yeah, but I think right now overall Sacramento's roster overall still has enough in this case that they can yeah. win. Over- they're balanced enough. They yeah. should, in theory, if they make it through, they should be a good. They, depending on matchups, they could make it through the first round. Right. But, exactly. Well, that's yeah. the part that's going to be fascinating about this. I think matchups, especially in the West, I don't think I've ever seen it's the very, end. very interesting because it's very even all the way through as well. Well, it's one of those things where you can see someone getting swept. And you wonder what happened. I think two teams got the same record. Mike is well, it's, it's it's uh there's a rock paper scissors thing kind of going on mm-hmm. up there. Yeah. Like there's some matchups where it's like, ooh, I don't know. Like for example, if I'm in, if like for example, if I'm if I'm the Clippers, do I want Minnesota in the second round? I don't know if I want that. It's a good question. It's a very yeah. good question. I just see three teams coming over the West potentially, and the Lakers aren't one of them. And quite frankly, OKC isn't one of them. OKC, I'm worried about their. I'm worried about their size. They ain't getting me. And for o- it OKC, play- it's it's gonna come down to their their matchups going through yeah. and luck. It- like obviously the Lakers are one of the teams OKC doesn't want to see. No. Yes. Like Minnesota, um, they could come through in the West because they have a little bit of everything. They got shooting, they got size, you got stars, you got some guys who can really control the pace, i.e. Mike Conley. Uh the Clippers, I don't need to say much. They've been playing really well lately with Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. And they can match up with Minnesota too, with Big Z and Plumley. And Denver, the, the reigning champs. Yeah. Is I, there- I just see one of those three teams coming through in the West. Is there any chance that the Rockets or the Jazz sneak into the ten? I doubt it because because of the the gap. Yeah, I, no, I, I think they could. You think so? Huh? Which one? I think I think the Jazz could. Jazz the Jazz like, can because they're one game behind Golden State. Yeah, Utah's the one of the two. If you told me which one I had to put a gun in my head, I would say Utah. Houston yeah. Houston flew high and then crashed back down to earth. A little bit. They're depending on their young they guy. ran they ran out of gas a bit I think yeah um okay uh let's just flip to the east real quick uh so you're one through eight I didn't say my one through eight but I'll that's fine Go for, it. <laughs> for Go the for west it. No, man. It, it, well my one through eight through the west is more or less the same as you guys uh but um I I think that j- the jazz could maybe sneak in it's the Warriors again on the high end they could go on a run but I think that they also might struggle because they're they're one Steph ankle you know out for a week and a half away from collapsing back down yeah and the one thing that the Warriors and the Lakers and especially gonna hurt the Warriors is that with the two those two teams their schedule actually does mean something because how, yes. how they usually set up the schedules for those two teams usually they're tougher parts of the schedule it usually is the back end when the football season is done yeah I haven't looked at the different you know different schedules but um, 
but you know other than the raptors specifically coming up but i i would say that yeah like the, the scheduling is going to play a big factor for those bottom teams um especially the ones that we talked about the, the specifically the bottom two um moving to the east uh again folks this isn't rankings just one you know people that will make it so i think the bo- the top six seven eight is set through the east right now i don't see that changing they're just too much of a gap between them and someone else like orlando would have to lose a lot to drop out of the top eight so i think we are more or less set um how that ends up factoring in again there's a little bit of a drop off so it's really four through eight is going to be the biggest uh shift and right now i think that the knicks and philly are going to be the ones that uh could potentially drop down yeah I think I agree with you. I think the eight are pretty much set. I do think in this case, I agree with you. I think actually, I think the Pacers will move up. I think as yes. time, Kyle Burton and some of these guys get healthier. Oh, I mean, the, the the Philly has one game on them. Yeah. And then does. like they've, they, you know, they're, we'll see what happens. But I mean, Joel Embiid is Joel Embiid for better or for worse. If you're a fan of him or not, like he's important to that team. Oh, and so is OG. <laughs> Unfortunately, with, actually, with both these guys and Randall, <laughs> Randall not so much. But these other two guys, they take a long time to ramp up, even when they get back. That like, too, they're, they're not coming in the first day back for injury. Like here's here's twenty five and two fifteen. That's not. Right. And B takes a minute to get everything worked again. And OG as well too. So I I don't know. Like I think in this case here, I think the Pacers will pass Philadelphia for sure. New York maybe not because I mean Brunson's good enough that he can hold the fort. So I again. Don't know. I, I don't think that the Knicks will fall as much, but again, I don't know their schedule. It really depends on their schedule, but I could see them. They're not, the Knicks will be within the top six. Yeah. I, I don't Knicks, know if Philly will be. Yeah. I mean, the Pacers have played a ton of games against the top three, four teams already in the East. Yep. We're done with all of them. So like the, for the rest of the season, they could be feeding on some minnows real quick. <laughs> <laughs> the move up and then they got Halliburton back for a full time now pretty much after this break so I wouldn't be surprised seeing them and um yeah so I I, I think I here's one thing I'll say I'll say this right now I'll put it out here anyone can take that and take shots at me I, I do not think the Boston Celtics will be in the Eastern Conference Finals well at the beginning of the season what did I say I said that they're built to be a better regular season team but I said I don't know if they can make it through the playoffs and I still maintain that today mm-hmm. coach your one through eight. I think the one through eight is a little definitely more clear than it is in the West. I do see Philly possibly falling off because I'm just looking at Orlando, who's in the eighth spot. They are two and a half games back of Philly, who is in the fifth spot. Mm-hmm. Orlando and Miami both. And Beach could be out a while. That's going to be a massive hit to Philadelphia. But I just don't see how they're, def- they're definitely not going to go up. They just want to stay above water until he comes back basically they're just trying Uh, yeah exactly so in terms of first boston's got that locked up there beyond's beyond's cracking up (laughs) boston's going to be in first there's no doubt i think cleveland's the second best team in the east i I really do i think they're better than milwaukee and i think they're better than the knicks star power shooting length like Pretty and there's just a bit well. too much of a gap between them and Boston for them to catch Boston. Yeah. So, yeah, Indiana's going to be in the mix, you know, between, like, maybe fourth and, like, eighth. It's so hard to say with a few of the teams there, but all I know is one thing for sure, Toronto ain't get, not getting in the top eight. Oh. One thing I can confidently Absolutely say. not. Well, well, I mean, we have the two other spots. Who's getting the other two for the playing game? Because well, I mean, that that's the interesting thing. Chicago yeah. definitely is one. I there's so, no way. They yeah, get too no, much. Sh- Chicago too has yeah, like if yeah, Chicago has a little bit of a cushion, and they have enough to get them over the hump. Can you imagine this? That if the Raptors found a way to get in there, and all of a sudden Philadelphia was in the playing game against them. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Their place will burn down. I mean, Raptors Twitter will be on fire like you've never seen before. We would have to come out of the break winning seven in a row oh, or five in a row for that. Yeah, it, it would be a fun wrinkle though. It would it would be. <laughs> it would it would wow. people would tune into the game, let's put it that way. Um 
Yeah, I don't. Uh, in terms of the bottom of the East, I think. I think it's set as well, honestly. Uh, we already just talked about Chicago. I think Atlanta, it just has too much of a gap. Um, the In terms of the Toronto, uh, I think that Toronto could eventually pass the Nets. That's about as high as you get. That's as high as I think they'll probably get, Just which is <laughs> hurts me. <laughs> it, just, it, it, it hurts. It, it only hurts because of the pick. That's Spurs, it. Like that top hey, 10 man, people. we got to get rid of it, so... Uh, I, I, I'm I'm glad that people are are now shifting their mind over over time towards this, and uh, it, it's 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 a beautiful thing to see. Uh, oh yeah, no, you need to get rid of it because even if you do end up the sixth worst record, that doesn't mean that you keep the pick. There's still going to be lottery odds that say no, you're not keeping it. It just sucks even more because yeah, like this. Oh, you're finishing seventh. It's like ugh, the Spurs literally get the best pick they could from us. Yes. 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 Um yeah, I mean, hey, I will say this. I ran the lottery odds today. First try. Toronto moved up five spots. <laughs> we got the first pick. Because we're in six right now. So we moved up five spots. Uh it was a beautiful thing. Uh I, I did t- first try. So that could happen, people. So those yeah. of you who are team tank <laughs> could still happen. In a Barniani draft. Completely Toronto. We could get Bunyani. Of all drafts. Of all drafts. But uh, with that being said, we are going to talk about the draft on another episode of Basketball Rewind. So take care, everyone. Enjoy the rest of the season. And this is going to be fun to continue to talk about throughout. So, yeah. And uh, peace.